good morning students in this e class of ba part 3 paper first of english literature of bnd government arts college chamunpura i dr ekta goswami welcome you all to this class in the earlier classes we had begin up with the first poem of your syllabus ulysses and we had discussed line 1 to line 18 so uh, all through line 1 to 18 we had come to know that this poem is a dramatic monologue in which ulysses is expressing his ideas we have come to know that ulysses is tired of this quiet peaceful unexciting life as a king and passing his days in the company of his aged wife performing the dull and idle and uninteresting duties pertaining to his position as the king of ithaca and in his memories in his broodings he recalls his past which was full of action which was full of adventure and he remembers how enjoyable it was whether he was traveling alone or in the company of his friends and all his youth he was roaming about with an eager mind searching for knowledge searching for new discovery so he had visited strange lands strange climates unusual people new lands and wherever he went he was honored he reminds himself of his position in the trojan war and how he proved his bravery over there so all his past experiences have gone into making of what he is today in this class we would read the poem further and discuss line 19 to 32 of the poem yet all experience is an arch where through gleams that untravelled word whose margin fades forever and forever when i move how dull it is to pause to make an ant to rust unburnished not to shine in use as though to breathe were life so yet Ulysses says that all experience is an arch. Ulysses compares knowledge to an arched entrance. And means what does this arch entrance is doing to Ulysses's life that it gleams an untraveled word means it is an entrance it is a gateway towards the word which is new which is untraveled which is not visited by people so this is a new land this is a strange discovery of new area new region that this arch is taking him to whose margin fades forever and forever when i move so he says that when he goes further and further forever and forever means when he is moving ahead when he is entering into these lands the, those regions also begin to recede into distance so there's so much to explore there is so much to see there is so much of the new region to be visited how dull it is to pause to make an end so he is saying that the journey itself is a delight to him if he has to make a pause if he has to stop pauses to stop to make an end to make an end to his travel to make an end to his journey this is something which is dull to him which is idle to him he enjoys himself during these travels for him all these journeys all these adventures they are very exciting and if he has to sit back like he is doing right now at this time this is something which is very dull to him and how uh, is putting an end to this journey how sitting idle means how when he sits idle he compares it to rust unburnished 
not to shine in use as the metals rust as the instruments rust if they are not taken into use similarly if there is no knowledge no learning there is nothing left to learn in a human life it rust so if a knife or some other steel article if it is constantly used it retains its brightness but if you let it lie somewhere unused then it will rust similarly he is saying that if in a men's life a man does not keep his mind busy by refreshing himself by journeying to new lands by putting himself into some adventure by seeking knowledge then this idle life this lazy life would take him to a similar condition like the rust of the instrument or rust of some knife so he advocates that the mind retains its brightness the mind remains fresh if it is constantly gathering fresh knowledge and so any kind of idleness whether that is an intellectual idleness or whether it is a physical idleness is condemned by ulysses so he is saying that this life which is like a rusty instrument which does not retain its shine or luster or sharpness as the instrument becomes useless similarly human beings life if it is not actively engaged in some pursuit of knowledge is a wasted life as though to breathe were life so he is condemning such kind of life which is only satisfied by breathing so he is saying just to breathe is not life life is something more than breathing means a man should have a purpose a man should have a meaning in life so you should never be satisfied with with merely existing in this world what should be the purpose of life it should be to strive for knowledge it should be to strive for new learning and if there is action in life if there is observation in life if there is new learning in life if there is knowledge in life then only the purpose of life is to be fulfilled so in line 19 to 24 he advocates action into human beings life now let's take up line 24 to 32 life piled on life were all too little and of one to me little remains but every hour is saved from that eternal silence something more a bringer of new things and while it were for some three suns to store and hold myself and this gray spirit yearning in desire to follow knowledge like a sinking star beyond the utmost bound of human thought so life piled on life life piled on life means that if there were a series of life one after another if a number of lives are given to him so even there are a number of lives if it is given to a human being were all too little so means they would not be sufficient they are too little very little and means uh, for what purpose they are little for seeking knowledge means there's so much learning there's so much knowledge into this world that even if a human being is given a number of lives it would not be sufficient for him so no, because knowledge in this world it is unlimited and means uh, a series of lives that would not be sufficient for a man to take up all the knowledge and of one to me little remains and when he is trying to brood upon his own life because ulysses at his, at this stage he is an old man 
so he is saying that the major part of my life is over and whatever remains is just a little part of my life that now remains but every hour is saved from that eternal silence so he is saying that because only a small portion of life is left to me therefore every hour is saved means i want to make use of each and every hour that is given to me in this remaining short span of life so he is saying that means every hour that he can spend it should be spent in the activity which should be regarded as being utilized before he puts him puts himself into silence now putting himself into silence to that eternal silence means death so before death takes him away from this life he wants to utilize each and every moment each and every hour that is now left for him something more a bringer of new things so he is saying that means how i want to utilize my life so that it brings something more more adding to my knowledge adding to my learning so it brings it is a bringer it is a messenger or it is a giver of fresh knowledge and new experience and while it were for some three suns to store and hold myself so while is for foolish while is for mean so he is saying that means it is foolish on my part it is mean on my part for some three suns to store and hoard myself so he is saying means again he is saying that uh, he is trying to regret that the life which is left for him is a very small portion of life because now he is old and he is saying that there is so much to learn there is so much to seek as far well as knowledge is concerned that the remaining part of his life is a very small portion of life so he is saying that it is foolish it is mean on my part to conserve or save my energy for the three suns to store now three suns does not mean three days over here it means three years so he is saying that there is only a small portion of my life that is left and he must not spend these three or these few remaining years of his life in idleness storing and hoarding myself now he is saying that my subjects or people over here in ithaca can be satisfied with a comfortable life eating and resting themselves but i cannot satisfy myself with this idle kind of a life and this grey spirit yearning in desire now he is saying that this grey spirit means my spirit which has turned old my age is restricting myself from these adventurous journeys but the desire in my heart it is still very strong though physically i have gained age so my aged heart is still craving for knowledge to follow knowledge like a sinking star so to follow knowledge like a sinking star means i want to follow each and every aspect of knowledge even to the last moment of my life so he is saying that i would like to seek knowledge and just like a man i would like to follow a star i would like to follow knowledge like a star sinking sinking here means passing from this word into another word so he is saying that means i just uh, means as long as this life is given to me i would like to seek new knowledge new learning to follow knowledge like a sinking star beyond the utmost bound of human thought and what kind of knowledge you would like to achieve his desire for knowledge is 
unlimited. Ulysses says that he would like to follow knowledge even beyond the extent that has been achieved by human being. Means beyond the utmost bound of human thought. Humans, they have not even thought of that kind of knowledge which he wants to achieve. He can be old. His faculties may be weak. But his desire to gain new experience and of the new word of the new learning is something which is unlimited in his heart. So Ulysses may be read as a dramatic presentation of his desire of seeking new knowledge and this is a man who advocates a philosophy of action, of struggle, of endeavor and in a sense this is a very optimistic poem because it urges the need of going forward and braving the struggle of life. Pausing yourself, sitting idle is something that he derides. He advocates a life which is a life full of action. And Ulysses is the main character and he's embodying a philosophy of action which stimulates us to efforts and urges us to shake off our idleness. One more thing uh, that should be referred to is that this poem was first published in 1842 and it is quite remarkable for the advocacy of action and it represents that Ulysses even when he is in his old age he has a yearning or he has a desire for action for adventure and he is just trying to recall his past life.